construction all completed. Uh, the only thing that's not on video is just managing the cords with some spiral wrap. And uh, I actually did convert an ATX power supply already for this printer, but that wasn't on video, so I'm going to show it again with another power supply that I just happen to have on hand from surplus computers that have just been given away. But this is what we're dealing with today. You notice we have all these other cords coming off. Uh, I have a modular one as well that I use for the other printer that I set up. And it's much nicer because all of these different bundles of cords are separately uh, connectable. So you only use the ones that you need. However, these are the more common type. And you could go inside, crack this open and tear them out. But I really don't want to risk it and it doesn't really bother me that much. So the only thing we really need to be concerned about are this big bundle that goes to the motherboard and I'm going to be using the, the GPU power right here. You can use any of these others that are paired yellow and black wires running into these connectors, but I'm going to just start with these and uh, if I need more I'll tackle into that one. Any of the Molex connectors you don't really need or the SATA, uh, we'll just set those aside for now and just get into these. So to start off with, you could crack all this open and basically seal off all these wires, but all you really need to do is take this green wire, it's only going to be one, and any black wire and snip them out. The other way to do this is to just connect them with jumper cables or jumper leads between these two terminals right here. But I'm going to cut them out, uh, strip it down a little bit, solder them together, and put some heat shrimp if I have any, uh, and if not, just some electrical tape around them. Basically what this does is the computer detects whether the power supply detects whether this is plugged into a motherboard or not, and it does that by shorting or connecting these, uh, these two wires, or the green with some other ground on the board. And when that goes back to the power supply, it says this is plugged into a motherboard, we can pump power through it. And that's kind of a safety measure. By doing this, we're tricking it into thinking that it's connected into the motherboard and it'll still give us that power even though there's no actual processing uh, going on. So as you can see, I just uh, spliced that a little bit back, maybe three-eighths of an inch, uh, wove them together and soldered it up a bit, you know, a little bit more, a little bit more back here. Um, I didn't have any heat shrink tubing that size. All of it is this really narrow stuff or super huge stuff. So I'm just going to wrap it in electrical tape for now. Uh, maybe go back to it later once I acquire some more. Basically, that's now shorted out. So if we were to turn on the power supply, it would detect it as being connected to a computer and send power through all the cords. So I'm going to take this guy and basically do the same exact thing. I'm going to have to pull uh, this heat shrink off a little bit so I can access these wires a bit better and basically just match up all the yellows together and all the blacks together. The yellow is the hot, the blacks the ground, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, so here we have all the yellows bundled up. I'm gonna solder them, solder them together. We have all the blacks bundled up. I'm gonna solder them together and then attach a lead to each of them and that'll just go directly into the uh, control board of our 3D printer. All right, so here we go. Got this one, I'm gonna just kind of twist it in there. Just all four around. This one we've got. And I do have a bigger heat shrink that I will be putting around here just for safety. I like to keep the leads that go into the printer PCB pretty short just because the, the way they screw in there is not super secure and uh, don't want to don't want to do any exposure to um, the, the, uh, the ground and just short it out right there at the end. Um, the other thing you can do is replace the fixture on the print bed or the 3D printer PCB entirely which is what I did with one of my printers to be a quick connect 
And so you attach your your wires directly into this quick connect. It's kind of like a JST connector, but a lot more robust where they screw in rather than just snap in. And uh, I would recommend that if there's enough real estate on your printer to be able to mount those effectively without ruining uh, any of the other chips that are on the bed. So it's gonna goop this up a little bit. Might have to retwist a couple times just to get everything kind of attached in there nice and tight. Once you have them all wrapped up, all you need to do is attach the wires to the PCB of your 3D printer, yellow or whatever color your lead was, to the positive, and black to the ground to the negative. Make sure they're in there nice and tight and there's not really any risk of these wires touching anything else. Uh, then do some cable management as I definitely need to do <laughs> and uh, get it going. I still have the power cables on there from the original power supply so I'll be getting rid of those. And just to show you this is the, the junk that originally came with it. Uh, they come with all of these cheap Chinese knockoff rep rep printers. These basically are power banks, the inputs and the outputs. Um, and some of them are okay, like this one's been running fine for almost a year now. I've never had any issues with it and it heats up relatively quickly. But the two other printers that I have, these were completely shot when I came, like capacitors were exploding inside here. Luckily no fires, but just avoid it. These uh, ATX power supplies are very plentiful. Like I have five of them that I've managed to acquire just from surplus and uh, computers ending up on my doorstep either through Craigslist or things like that and um, they're almost almost better than free so go ahead and pick one up and it's a super easy conversion you could probably do all of your fleet of printers uh, in an afternoon so I hope that was helpful and happy printing all right, so here's the new 3D printer up and running happily with that ATX power supply back there. I also, uh, what you just saw me do was rig up this other one, which I'm using to power Tango, an original 3D printer. So now she has a younger sister. They're almost exactly the same. Different manufacturer, but basically the same build platform. Um, and actually, don't, pardon the construction mess there, I had been using this. I designed and 3D printed this kind of box to hold a power switch and a cord connector right there. That's just all plugged up. And using the original power supply for Tango over here and decided to give her a little treat because she just finished printing her 
300th Shatterack. So she gets a little birthday present. Um, there are a lot of modifications that I've done to, to Tango as well. Added a couple little stabilizers up front here. This is a tensioner for the Waxis belt. Little caps there, another frame support back there. This cable chain keeping everything nice and tidy. A couple other things as well. I'm going to do similar uh, upgrades to our new printer, which I am calling Citra. And all of those will be out of yellow because it's color coded. Continue the tour. This is Ruby. She's kind of a problem child. So, still got a lot of parts that I've got to either build or design so that will get her running nice and smooth as well and uh, complete the siblings. Thank you.